Hello everyone, welcome back to Brian's Tech Tips. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Today, I'm sure you can guess what we're doing. I have a 1971 Mercury Cougar, and we're going to do a manual transmission swap. So that means we got to get the third pedal ready. The parts you'll need is the pedal. This is from Modern Driveline. Pretty sweet little part. I will link all of the parts in the description, but there is the part number engraved on it. And then you will need the Scott Drake roller bearing kit. I have two kits, which is over here. Uh, Modern Driveline said they were out and didn't know when they'd get them, so I tracked some down, so now I have two. So we are just gonna put this over here because we already got our parts. And then I will show you how to cut the pedal, what measurements you need for the pedal. So let's just get right into this. I'm gonna try to give you the best camera angles possible. I can't promise anything though. And just, so the kit is pretty easy. You have the roller bearing, this piece, sits through there, then you have a washer, and then you have a C-clip, whatever you want to call them, not a C-clip, it's a retainer. And that's how it goes, but it's not that easy, unfortunately. So I did a lot of playing with this kit last night. I had to grind down the washer or else the retainer would not fit on the groove where it should. It should be right there. So I had to grind it down. And just so you know that this process will require welding. But that's the easy first step of it doing. Another thing that I did. I made this piece centered in the hole tried to hold it there, sorry, that this is going to be a hard camera angle for you guys. Put the washer on, and then I drew that line you can see right there, so I need to put it right there. Put the clip back on. Now that line is important that it lines up for when you're ready to weld so it stays in the same spot. Then on this side you do the exact same thing. Now you have to hold the back of this while you put the the washer on. This back. Now on this one, I haven't made the line yet. So it's about here. So it's centered in the hole.
put the other snap ring on this side. Now I had to grind and grind on those washers to get this to fit in the groove. Make sure it fits in the groove or your stuff's gonna come off. And you are not going to be happy if you have to pull this out again. can see that that's lined up I want to install the big bolt Now, I'm installing the big bolt because I want to make sure this turns freely. See how it's kind of binding? When we weld, we don't want this to bind. We want this to move as smooth as possible. Now it's okay if this line isn't perfect on one side, but you definitely want to have one side at least centered. So I want, I'm gonna use this side centered. And then I can see that this other side is pretty close to centered. But I don't know if you can see this. I can no longer fit my um, snap ring into the groove. So I am going to have to grind this down a little bit more. I'll be back. Okay, we are back. I have grinded down this washer again. I don't have the C-clip pressed in place yet. I figured maybe you wanna see it. I don't know why. Okay, we got everything installed. The next process is welding. I'm not gonna show you how to weld. I'm not that great of a welder. But what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to do what's called a stitch weld. This is thin metal. If you do one continuous bead around without stopping, you are going to warp it. I'm going to do what's called stitch welding. I'm going to weld here, like a little tack weld, then weld here, and then weld here, then weld here, move to the other side, do the exact same thing, not just stitch welding. Um, I'd highly suggest watching some stitch welding. I would not suggest this for your first time welding, but you do you. But make sure that when you're welding, this stays moving very freely. If it doesn't, you have problems and don't continue to weld because you're gonna make your problems worse. Now you want this to smooth as buttery as humanly possible. Make sure your lines line up. I'm gonna weld it up and I'll see you again in a second. Okay, I wanna give you one more tip before I start welding. I don't want any weld splatter to get on my new parts. Everything except the washer, I'm legit gonna cover it in tin foil just to make sure that I don't get any splatter on the threads. 
And make sure, make sure when you're welding that this stays moving freely as humanly possible. If it doesn't, you have problems and it needs to be repaired. And I think I'm just gonna put a little bit on the other side to cover the bolt. It's probably not really needed, but it's better safe than sorry. Now again, I'm doing that just to keep the weld splatter off the new parts. If it gets on the bolt, it's not a huge deal here. You can knock it off on the threads. I don't want to mess with it. I want this to go as smoothly as humanly possible. Again, before you weld, make sure your lines mark up as close as possible on both sides. And then do not lay a single bead of weld, please. Stitch weld here, like a little tack. Here, tack, here, tack, tack. And just keep going and randomly switch sides. Do not pour a lot of heat into this. You'll warp the metal. This won't sprint freely anymore and you are gonna be in a world of hurting. All right, I'll be back. I'll show you the final product. All right, we are done welding. I'm just gonna show it to you. I am not a welder, but I have no worries about this moving or breaking. Here is the other side. Nice clean, not boogery. One thing I did do is I greased up those bearings after everything was installed. I made sure the rod still moves very freely. It does. Now, the last part is we have to make this a um, manual transmission brake pedal. Now, luckily, I had a um, manual brake pedal lying around. I'm sure a lot of you don't have that, so I'm going to help you. What I did was I made this template. Fits exactly perfectly over this brake pedal. Super simple. Now I'm gonna move this down a little bit so you can see. You only have to cut the left side. And see how I marked that perfectly? Now, I said I was going to help you, so this is what I'm gonna do. Let me get you a little closer. I'm going to measure it for you. Now, I want you to note, this side is pretty much flat with curves on the edges. So I'm going to line this up flat to here. Now, if you notice on the top right corner right here, that is not flat. But luckily on this pedal, it's not flat either. So you don't have to mess with this. But the measurement right there will get you really close. 78.53 millimeters. Now, if you want inches, almost three inches exactly. I just made a template for me. And then what I'm going to use is a grinder and a cutoff wheel. I'm not gonna film that. I'm sure you guys can figure out how to use a grinder and a cutoff wheel. I'll be back, I'll show you the final product. All right, here is the pedal cut. What I used was a grinder, cordless, bower. Honestly, it's not the best. The new brush for this one is pretty sweet though. And then to do the corners to smooth those out, I used my Milwaukee M12 fuel angle die grinder with a 36 grit sandpaper, I believe. So I have Everything smoothed out. Don't have to worry about cutting my fingers when I put the pad on. Um, I'm not sure if I can put the pad on while you guys watch. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But what you do is you get the pad on or the, the pedal in here. Then you lock these two down or these four actually, and you're good to go. I'm going to do that real quick because the camera's in the way and I'm sorry. I couldn't give you a good angle of that anyway. 
Okay, we have the brake pedal pad installed. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like real quick so you're not confused. Let me turn this around. Now, you see that this rubber just goes over it. Then you push these tabs down, locks them in place. You will have this bump because you had an automatic brake pedal, but not a big deal. You won't see that, but it looks good. Now, last thing we have to do, let me get you in focus, is install the clutch pedal. It just slides on there. You put this locking washer over it. Tighten it down, you're done. Let's just take a final look at it. That just looks good. Remember, like, subscribe. And since you watch to the very end of this, I'm just gonna give you a quick little tip. So, this brake pedal, it's really hard to see in there since it's dark. There we go, I hope that's a little better. It has two little bushings on it. Now, in this kit, it comes with these two little bushings. You can use those to replace the brake pedal bushings. It is super easy. Loosen this nut, slide this out, pull the pedal out. There's a rod with two bushings on it. You put the bushings on, you put the rod back in, put a little grease on her, buttery smooth. All right, now I'm just making a mess. Just want to give a final little view if we can. Oh yeah, that looks good. Remember, do not put a lot of heat in this or you're going to have problems. Oh, smooth and beautiful. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Brian's Tech Tips. Follow along. We're putting a manual, or sorry, in a, yeah, manual transmission in a 71 Mercury Cougar. I will make all the videos for it. Um, I'm going to do an unboxing video later. All right. Remember, like, subscribe. Love you guys.